We'll take a few questions at a time, around three questions, and then turn to the speakers for their responses. So, do Okay, um, I'm Dominic from UNU Wider, and I uh, have a first question actually to both of you. Um, I mean, you mentioned your presentation as migration has different, uh, second, you call it push pull factors or triggers. How did you manage, um, especially, um, especially interested in the context of slow onset environmental degradation, how did you manage to isolate the factor of, let's call it climate change or weather? as a factor that people migrate. Then a second, just a tiny small comment is, um, it's maybe a bit problematic using the word refugee in the context of, uh, of climate change. As you know, the term is protected by the UN Convention on Refugees. So maybe just as a little, little hint. Okay, thanks Dominic. Um, I, think, I think we had a question right in the back there. All the way in the back, he has his hand up. Yes, uh, I'm Josh Busby from the University of Texas. I, my question is for Ms. Uh, Nagabata. I, I hope I didn't mispronounce that. In any case, um, I wanted to ask you how, how you calculated both drought and flood in your initial graph. I, I just was interested in uh, what the equation that you had used to uh, calculate that. And then in your vulnerability um, index, um, you had three parameters, exposure, poverty, and ad adaptive capacity, and I think the first um, unit uh, that you showed had a four, a four, and a two, and then the overall score was a five. And so I didn't know how you got there. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Josh. Okay, then, okay. <laughs> Let's take this gentleman here. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Enes Tumula from Cameroon, University of Boya. I wanted to find out from the two presenters, both uh, Nidi and Brinda, are these um, people, vulnerable people, left to their own device? Um, I didn't hear anything about um, local government actions, you know, public sector actions to be able to reduce the vulnerability of these exposed communities. Thank you. Okay, maybe we take uh, two or three more questions because I see a lot of people are, are anxious. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Jahangiram Chaudhuri from Bangladesh. I teach at the University of Dhaka. Uh, the point, the, like the first question I would like to I've got the same question, how do you distinguish between uh, weather-related migration and climate-related migration, climate change-related, this is a big question. Uh, as I am from uh, Bangladesh, I know the, actually the, the, what is happening in, the, in my country, that most of the migrations are happening not uh, due to the climate change, rather it's a, like, it's a policy problem, because we have got river bank erosion, okay. And most of the migrations are, you know, are happening or have been happening due to this reason. And it's, it, this erosion problem is not because of the uh, uh, climate change, rather it's a, it's a problem of development policy make, uh, implementation or the uh, allocation of the resources you know, from where to where. This is the main problem. And you have said that uh, most of the people are actually uh, migrating from southern part to the northern part, especially in the Russia region. But Russia region has got another climate change problem, desertification. Yeah. So, so have you actually accounted for that thing in your model or not? This is a one question. Second thing is that you see what you were saying that by 2020, half of the people of the, you know, 50% of people will have to migrate from one region to another region. Uh, I, I don't understand how do you get this number, you know, because there are some lots of things that are actually uh, influence this sort of like, you know, a thing. And, and until unless you accounted for all those things and which is, which are actually difficult to account, which are, which is really, really difficult. So until unless you do it and this sort of like projection or the forecast is actually is, is sometimes give, you know, misleading information. Uh, and I think if, uh, if that happens, that 50% people have to migrate from southern part to northern, Bangladesh will not exist, actually. It will not be possible for us to accommodate 160 million people in only 80,000 80, square kilometer. So that's the okay. point. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I saw one other hand uh, on this. I think this gentleman has had your hand raised. 
Yes, I am from Nepal. Uh, I'd like to first present the first one. Uh, you talk about the, these uh, migration with the agriculture. Do you have the, some uh, data about the migration due to the drying or migration due to the flooding or drought? And even is it one-year data for the yield or the long-term data for the because you I think you talk in the household data analysis and then it is uh, if if one-year data for a yield for the one year might be the bias due to the migrations and also if the resource availability of the household, if the, 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 the household which has the low, no irrigation or upland farming, rain fed farming and no irrigation, then there might be more effect than the, those who are the irrigation facility. So uh, what are the major concern about the yield uh, to the migrations? And the, another one is the, for the second presenter, I have some queries about the, this, uh, change the cropping pattern is uh, due to uh, it is the opportunity cost also, the, the lack of the adaptations. If there are the more income rise from the, the vegetable than the rice, then they automatically farmers want to uh, change the cropping pattern. So is it due to the climate change or opportunity cost for the market? Thank you. Okay, thanks. I think we better let the presenters respond and then we'll take another round of questions. So uh, Brenda, do you want to go first? Um, this kind of answers questions for all the three um, uh, questions that came from Nepal, Bangladesh, as well as from you and your wider as to how do we distinguish um, the migration that's caused by other uh, con uh, other factors and, and link it up to weather uh, and climate. So first I'll answer the question that the model has an econometric framework where we are controlling for the other factors which we have not yet identified what those other factors are they are sitting in those uh, um, fixed effects coefficients that we have for the dummy for the states and the time. So there, is, there are some changes that are happening over time. There are some changes in the other variables that are happening across the space. All of them are sitting in that unidentified source, uh, which is, I think, important to do that, which we'll take, up, take it up slowly as we move on. But after accounting for those variations, we say that the remaining is being accounted for by the yield changes that we see here. But the second question, I think, that comes from Bangladesh is how do we distinguish between climate and weather uh, because climate is a long-term change and weather is kind of a more uh, annual, annual change that we are looking at. Uh, the way the migration data has come in for the Indian context, we have it as five-year averages over the time periods that we are looking at. Uh, if it's at the country level data that we are looking at for the five, six uh, time points, and therefore we are actually averaging the yield over those five-year periods. So it's kind of covering the 30-year period that you one would look like look at for a climate change, but it is not uh, really a climate change because the variations are within those five-five-year period that we are looking at. So uh, it's kind of midway between climate and weather if one were to look at it in the true definitional sense, but uh, there is more of weather variation that we're talking of and the weather variation impacting yield variations and hence its impact on the migration. We do it at two levels. One is at the state level where we have larger variation in the time frame but lesser variation in the space. And then we do it at the district level where there's a larger variation in the space and lesser variation over time. And to some extent, both of these are accepted in the literature to try and understand changes uh, of uh, weather on yield. And uh, we have sort of followed that strand of literature and extended it to migration. Um, that sort of answers largely the, the methodological inputs that are there. And, and most of the data issues are more detailed discussed in the paper. And I would like you to take a look at that. All right, I'm going to take the point on refugee first. Certainly, uh, uh, refugee is not the f focus of my study, and I, I myself would want to not uh, integrate it with the refugee for, um, conceptual layout and the theoretical debate. But the thing is that when you, t uh, when you talk about referring to migration literature, it's often used in context of people migrating outside the national borders. And when we talk about climate-induced migration, I also found a lot of references using refugees, though they're not able to separate refugees, uh, whether they're climate-induced or induced by any other factors, like work or war or conflict or and so on and so forth, right? I think, um, but um, climate-induced refugees or climate refugees are a commonly used term in migration literature, is what I really want to comment upon. And um, you also talked about push and pull factors. 
Pushing pull factors is again, uh, when we talk about climate induced migration, I've taken the reference of push and pull factors from the migration literature. There are factors which are more lucrative for people to, um, to there are regions of factors that pull people uh, or because they have more opportunities and there are uh, uh, factors or regions that push people because they are extreme or because they are damaging or because they are da disaster related or because they don't offer any opportunity of survival, livelihood, income or profession or something. So I mean, this is a common reference to literature of migration. I, I, I hope I've answered that to your satisfaction. And I now switch on to the gentleman from Bangladesh who, who said that 50% uh, um, projection in population migrating from Bangladesh sounds really striking and um, critical. I have, this is not my projection. This is a study from BRAC, that's Bangladesh Research organization, and I've used just a reference. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, that is a, coll it's a collation of all the projections in Bangladesh, and this was one of the studies that I've referred. It was a compilation of BRAC, and you must be familiar with BRAC. And so I, it's, it's striking indeed, but I mean, I just wanted to project the intensity that one, one, uh, one or, or experts in the region are talking about. Whether it's, it's going to be 50% or not, I mean, it's just a projection and a forecast. I mean, we are not going to really get bogged down by it. Mm, then, I mean, uh, there was another question about droughts and flood. Where did I access the data? The data is from the federal records. What, what the definition was, the definition was uh, whether you are able to grow a crop during that season with the amount of rainfall received. If not, then it's, it's declared as drought. And if yes, then um, it's not declared as drought. And similarly, if you're not able to grow the co crop because of oh, the access of water or inundation, then it's declared as a flooding situation. Um, another important point that I would like to reflect is that uh, human migration is certainly a a, a very broad topic. And very in, in the recent last decade or so, we have seen that people have started talking about climate-induced migration. But to my understanding, I, I think it's rather very challenging or next to impossible to separate people who migrate because of climate and who migrate because of other factors. But when we take up, when we, if we can identify right surrogates or parameters and have federal records or other research records matching that, then to a certain extent we can say it's climate induced or not. For instance, in flooding or cyclones or other extreme events that goes into the federal records. Uh, and the gentleman from uh, Bangladesh also pointed about the people in Bangladesh, how they are migrating within the national borders. Um, then people are migrating to Rajshahi because uh, th this is just a seasonal migration. In wet season, Raj Rajshahi still op offers them uh, opportunity to work as agricultural labor, whereas in dry season, um, the situation might be grim. So they are looking for seasonal work, at least in the case. At, um, I, I'm just giving a reference to the literature that I have read, and there might be much more supporting factors or undermining factors. <coughs> This is what was available. Um, and basically, I've analyzed it in a spatial format, but the records that I've uh, used is limited, and the resources and the references are also limited in this regard. OK, mm. Nidhi, can we just take, uh, I know we had one more question, because the plenary is coming in in about five minutes, and I know they, they would like to set up. So I just want to, I, I know this gentleman, you had your hand raised for a while. So if we could take your question and um, get one final mm -hmm. response from both of you. Well, thanks very much for your wonderful presentation. Thanks, the moderator. Uh, uh, yeah, the relationship between climate change and the rural neighbor mobi mobi mobility is um, interesting. Uh, you use the instrumental variable to estimate the impact of climate change on migration. But uh, I think this might uh, amplify the impact of the climate change because um, I think uh, there exists a situation is that uh, um, some people move from one place to another place is just because they, uh, some people like uh, colder or, or warmer uh, place to live. So 
if you can't uh, consider this situation, I think this might uh, amplify the impact of the climate change on mobility. Uh, uh, the second issue is that uh, um, your estimation, the eco coefficients of the, your results uh, are very small. So, but I think this might because is because that uh, you didn't uh, uh, classify the age, the peoples of Asia, because uh, at the present um, in China, in China, uh, and the mobility, the most mobility of people is uh, from are from the uh, young people. So, if you didn't uh, distinct the uh, people by age, I think uh, this uh, magnitude of results might uh, very, very small. So um, this is my, my consideration for this. Thank you very much. OK, thanks very much. OK, let's just take uh, final responses from our presenters. Very quickly, um, uh, I think I did discuss this uh, com issue of amenity channel and the, um, that's, that's what you're talking about. Some people prefer colder and warmer regions to be in, in certain regions compared to the others. So that's kind of mentioned here, but we do not, we in fact do not find an evidence for amenity channel in our modeling exercise that we have done here. And as far as the age-wise data is concerned and the rates could be high, so the rates are low because migration rates per se in India are very low and you're sort of finding that different. Uh, so low in the results and responses that you're seeing here. The age-wise data is not available for the analysis that we would like to do. So that's, that's the reason why we didn't go about uh, being able to do that. But we would certainly like to look into it. But I think the concern could also be between short-term migrants and long-term migrants that some of others have also been mentioning that we've not been able to distinguish between somebody who keeps moving back and forth versus somebody who moves uh, to another place for long, for a, for for good. So that's the kind of uh, challenges that we have in the modeling and we hope to, we're working on this and we'll see more papers coming up. I just remember that I didn't answer your question on why would people want to grow rice if their other crops are more econo economically rational. I think uh, they, they, they pointed out that the, the rice is a water intensive crop and they don't have enough water during the rainfall season because there's a shift in monsoonal pattern. They have more, more rain after, uh, after the monsoons and in winter. So they prefer to grow rice during that season and so the uh, summer rice has gone wiped off. Okay. Okay, thanks Nini. Okay, well I think what we've really seen from this session is it's, it's quite difficult to isolate, uh, you know, whether migration is being driven specifically by climate change or by a host of, of other factors that many of you brought up, but I think this research is starting to push us in the right direction. So I'd like to give a hand of applause for our presenters.